This is the Axoon Cine i2 Pro HD wireless video system. This operates on Wi-Fi frequencies using MIMO technology. That's multiple in, multiple out. I believe that simply means it's transmitting on multiple frequencies, so in case there's interference on one, it picks it up on another. These units are relatively simple to operate, which is fantastic. The build quality is excellent. They have solid metal bodies, nicely machined. They have NPF battery mounts on the back and a DC barrel plug input also. These are HDMI only units, so no SDI. The transmitter has an HDMI in and out, so you can loop through to an onboard monitor, say. There are only a few controls on the unit itself. You have a power button on the side. There's a group knob on the other side. And then on the face, you have three buttons. So the operation is very simple. For mounting options, there is a single quarter 20 with RE locating pins on the bottom. It's kind of an odd situation because RE locating pins usually have a 3 8 16 threaded hole. So this is a little non-standard. To turn it on, you simply hold the power button for a second or two, the unit boots up. And for pairing, as long as they are set to the same group with the knob on the side, they will find each other automatically. There are four antennas across the top. It actually comes with nine antennas in case you lose one. They have a little bendable section there so you can angle them if your transmitter is mounted on an angle like this. You can point the antennas a certain direction. There's a USB-C connector on the side of the transmitter, then that's used for controlling your camera, which is not active at this time. There's also a USB-C connector on the receiver, but I understand this is only for future connectivity. It's currently not active. Now, as far as lag, uh, in my testing, there's very little. In fact, it's so low, I think uh, you won't even really notice it with this system. You'll mostly be limited by whatever your camera lag is. Most cameras have some delay over their HDMI output. So these units themselves have very little lag. Um, I think it's almost unnoticeable. Let's take a look at the menu. So to power on the units, you just hold the power button for a couple seconds. They both turn on. This is the transmitter and this is the receiver. So we can see the receiver comes up sooner than the transmitter because it has a lot less work to do. This has more settings and more operations going on internally than the receiver does. All right, we're up, so they should sync pretty soon. This one says uh, channel 165, so I expect this one to pick it up pretty soon, as long as they are both on the same group setting on this knob here. So there we go, now they're synced. So to get in the menu, just press the center button, and we can see the first page, it says transmission set. So we have high quality, normal, and speed. This doesn't have anything to do with the amount of delay between the transmitter and receiver. It just has to do with the quality of the image between the two. High quality being the best quality, but more likely to have dropouts. Normal is in the middle. Speed means uh, maybe a lesser quality image, but it's more likely to get there because it's gonna be more reliable on the transmission. I think it just has to do with um, the amount of bandwidth that it's using. The speed's going to have a, um, a lower bandwidth signal, so it's more likely to get to the receiver without any issues. The next page we have channel set. I've left this to auto so far, and I've been happy with that. But if for some reason you think one of these channels is going to work better than the other, then you can set that here. This says uh, area US. I don't know if I can change that. Um, I believe it might be set depending on where you buy your units. If you buy them in America, it's probably going to be set for the US. Um, different countries have different frequencies that you're allowed to operate on. This page resets the wireless. Um, I'm not sure when you would need to do that. Maybe if you have issues with these two connecting, you need to reset that. This page shows you information about the channel, um, the SSID, et cetera, et cetera. You can't change this here, so it's just kind of useless for me. And then another page here telling me what the uh, unit is, the version of the firmware, and then the website and their email address for support. And that's it. And on the receiver, you have less options. So you have, again, the transmission set. So you can set the quality of the transmission from either unit and they will both sync to one another. So if you change it on the receiver, it'll change on the transmitter and vice versa. And then uh, again, just information about the company, the version of the firmware, and it comes right back out. So there's a lot less to control on this thing. And that's it other than uh, the, the group knobs on the side. So like I said, very simple to operate, which I like. Um, you don't have to dig into menus and set a bunch of different settings and experiment to see what gives you the best results. You just let it do its thing and it works really well. So if I change the group, 
parameters have changed, restart to take effect. Yes, so it's going to restart this unit. Now that one loses contact. I need to change this to group two as well, and it'll restart. And again, this one should come up faster than the transmitter. See, so now we have the, tr the receiver up, and I did this after this one. So it it's much faster coming back up after a power cycle. And this one's back up, and now they should sync here. Channel 140, this should jump to channel 140. Okay, that took about 15 or 20 seconds to find the channel, but it, it, do it does find it automatically, and then we're set. I have to talk about the Wi-Fi app because you can receive the wireless signal to your phone. But it's available for Android and iPhone. And this thing has all the controls and features that you would expect. Uh, it has waveforms and LUTs and all those kind of things. Axum themselves have a really nice video on YouTube showing off all the features of the Wi-Fi app. So go watch that and you'll get a better understanding of what it can do. I have the Axum Cinei Pro 2 set up with uh, this little handheld gizmo thing. If I had more time, I'd do something different, or if I was going to use this on a serious production. And I've got the uh, Canon R5 doing the transmitting. Um, unfortunately, that camera wants to output 60 frames a second in 1080 um, and not 4K that it's recording right now. So anyway, we'll see how far I can go with this. Um, I imagine pretty far, but we'll find out. I'm recording on the, the Ninja V here, so I'll see if it drops out at all. So I am a block away, and I'm I'm seeing hits on this. Um, probably because I'm behind this van, it's blocking my path here. So it's it's working. Um, I'm you can't even see my house from from here. <laughs> I'm well away from where I started, and uh, it's just fine. So this isn't a you know what I call a super congested Wi-Fi area. But there's enough Wi-Fi here that, you know, to give this thing a good test, and it seems to be working just fine. Now, notice there is some delay. Um, it's not like you'd want to pull focus maybe from this distance, which I don't think makes sense anyway. Um, as a focus puller, you'd want to be closer to the action. But uh, it passed the distance test. Now, if I was in a heavily congested Wi-Fi area, like a, a downtown or something like that, um, it might be a different story, but this thing has four antennas, which I think it means it's transmitting on four different frequencies. And so if any one of those has interference, it'll skip to another one that doesn't have interference. All right, so now I'm doing a car-to-car -car setup. That vehicle over there, I have my uh, Zcam E2 F6 set up with the transmitter. It's recording, and I'm picking it up here on the receiver. So this is my setup, mounted on my tripod, just sitting on the floor, but I got an arm going to this armrest, or this headrest. And uh, you can see how I've got the antennas kind of splayed here, so that they, uh, they point all kinds of different directions. I'm trying to get a vertical, I think that's going to radiate the signal the best. And it was just pointing straight out the window. So I've got the uh, HDMI coming out of the camera, into the Axoon, and then out of the Axoon, into the monitor. And the only issue is um, the Axoon will take, you know, all kinds of signals. Right here it's getting a 24 frame 1080 signal, but it only outputs 1080 60. And so if I touch my screen here, you can see how I've got 1080 60. So if you don't like seeing 1080 60, you're kind of stuck. You'd have to pass from the camera into the monitor first and then into the transmitter which is the way I'd like to go anyway, but this BM5, the Portkey's BM5, only has HDMI in, doesn't have HDMI out. So now we're seeing on this monitor what that vehicle sees. It's about half a block away right now. Picked it up somewhere. Oh, a little cut out. They're way up there somewhere. way up there in front and a uh, little glitch, big glitch rather. It says they're disappearing around the corner. No, lost. So we're going around this hill. It's cutting in and out because uh, 
We're going behind the hills, I guess. It's down there now. And they're up there, three, four cars in front of us. Overall, I was pretty impressed with this test. Doing car-to-car -car wireless transmission like this is pretty hard, especially for video. Now this is only a 1080 resolution transmission, it's not 4K, but the production monitor I was using is only a 1080 monitor, so that's just fine. The quality was pretty good. I think you could see that it, even when it was coming in just fine, it was still mm, a little compressed. This is using H.264 and H.265 compression technology, so it's very efficient. That's partly why it can transmit so well, is because the bandwidth is lower for H.265. But what do you guys think? Have you used any wireless video systems before? Uh, um, I personally haven't, so I'm not sure how to compare this to any other system. Um, it worked well enough for me and my um, tests, so I'm curious to know if any of you have experience with another wireless system. I would like to see um, a version that has SDI, since um, I'll be getting a camera here pretty soon that has SDI only. Uh, I wouldn't be able to use this system with that camera. I know there are some systems on the market that have both HDMI and SDI, but uh, they're also quite a bit more expensive. Those are kind of in a different class. This, uh, at its price point, is much more affordable and still quite high quality, in my opinion. Uh, the build is very nice. One thing I'd like to see is uh, more mounting options. Having just the single quarter 20 on the bottom kind of limits me, especially since having it on the bottom, this thing is so tall vertically, it's either going to be sticking way up above your camera if you have it just mounted straight above your camera. If you tip it to the side, then it looks funny and the antennas don't really you know, point in the right direction. If it had some mounts on the sides, uh, on the back as well, that would be really, really nice to have. I do like that they have RE locating pins, but it, it is odd, again, that it doesn't have a 3 8 16 threaded hole, which is the standard for RE locating pins as far as I understand. You can't readily find things that have a quarter 20 with RE locating pins. You could hobble something together with small rig. I've done it before. They have some of their ball mount items that have RE locating pins and you can swap out the, th the threaded screw. But otherwise, um, the NPF battery slot, it works great. The batteries mount and dismount very easily. Uh, unlike some other devices that I have where, you know, it's difficult to get it in or difficult to pop it out. This one, it just slides in, it locks securely. Uh, I feel really good about that. I like that it has um, another method of powering with the DC barrel plug in. Uh, I would like to see maybe a slightly more professional connector like a locking two pin limo. Um, it might increase the price of the unit a little bit, but it would be uh, much more secure since um, I can imagine people using this on like a director's monitor rig that has handles, so it's gonna be moving around and being placed down a lot. These kind of connections can become disconnected very easily, whereas a locking system wouldn't. So there you go, that's the Axune Cine i2 Pro. Hey guys, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and hit that little notification bell so you know when I post my next video. I'll have a lot more equipment and cameras that I'll be testing in the near future, so you'll wanna see those.